tech rabbit here. I'm going to go over how to um, purchase a used um, data center server uh, based on my own experiences. And then um, for the 15 years worth of wisdom, we will take Bowmore. And um, nope, sadly I'm not sponsored. But, um, but this was sponsored by my wife. So big thanks to her. So uh, let's get into it. So if we're going to enjoy the whiskey, then we need some accessories. So water. And you need something that's a bit salty. And then you need something that's a bit sweet. Anyway, cheers. Let's get into it. So we're going to buy an old um, data center server. Okay, so there's things to think about first. And um, as I said, that I'm going to go through this based on my own experience and use case. Um, what you need to first think about is the what you plan to you plan to use the server for predominantly. It's the main uh, use case like storage. Is it going to be in, like part of a networking lab? Um, is it going to host applications? Um, and then when it comes to application hosting, you need to differentiate between running on the um, machine itself or as virtualized. Um, so those uh, have put their own requirements on what kind of server you'd like to, and configuration you'd be looking for. Are you just going to do a works to station substitution? So you think it might be a good option instead of buying a, a workstation, get a server to do the number crunching instead. Uh, I don't recommend uh, these old servers for things like data mining. So I, I, I still haven't seen anybody who's made a, any kind of a reasonable um, use case uh, for um, for um, mining in, in, in general, you know, either data mining or you know, Bitcoin mining or, you know, the Ethereum or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so there's there's better solutions for that. So let let's let's exclude those from the from the discussions for now. Uh, then um, usually up front, I, I would suggest you need to consider what type of operating system uh, are you going to run on it. So you have that out of the out of the way. Um, and then you have to take into account that the operating system and um, operating system license either the for the operating system or for clients is usually not included when you buy a um, used uh, data center server. Um, and if you're going to use Windows Server, um, then you do need um, client or device CALs. So those are specific licenses for each device that's going to connect to the unit or each user. And then they, there's even a separate CAL for terminal server access. So if you're going to have uh, like sharing the server resources using uh, several people accessing the server with um, terminal server, you need you need cows for that. It's just to take into account. Uh, if you're going to run Linux, then Linux some Linux server distribution. Then what specific distribution are you thinking about? You know the main brand like Ubuntu or Red Hat or 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 others. Or are you just going to put a desktop OS on it like like Windows? Uh, a variant of Windows, uh, presumably Windows 10, um, some Linux desktop version. Because there you can get issues with um, server hardware support, so desktop operating systems don't necessarily have all the um, drivers for all the um, server-side hardware that's being used. And um, one very tricky thing is the this comes to actually when you're more targeted down onto the specific server that you have to check that the server 
doesn't contain some vendor specific special software to either enable a specific operating system or even install it. So I, I've even seen that. So you actually have, the, have to have the vendor special um, firmware software to be able to install a specific operating system. And you don't get that if you don't have the vendor specific license. So you can get the hardware and you, and you can't install the operating system if you don't have the license for the specific functionality to install the operating system. <laughs> it ain't that much fun. So, moving on. Um, I put the minicam on so you can follow the amount of wisdom required to deliver this video. I do take pause and pauses from time to time to take some of the... Um, sweet and salt. Um, so I, mean, I think it's important you um, build a starting point mental picture of the approximate hardware configuration you would think would meet your requirements. So have that as a high level sort of uh, um, concept. And then you can actually consider more, more in detail the actual hardware. Um, I mean, basically, if you get, before you can start the selection process, you have to sort of uh, kind of the um, think, you know, how, how like the type of CPUs, like how many cores per CPU and stuff like that to get that. To, you know, what what speed category are you targeting? Uh, how many how many of the CPUs do you want to have? You you want to have like one, two, four, eight. Um, what kind of storage subsystem are you, are you looking for? Like, you know, what types of this? Yeah, I'll get more into detail a little bit later. Uh, types of memory supported. This can be a, a little bit tricky. In some servers from some manufacturers, they, um, only allow full functionality and full speed of the memory in question if it's branded memory and and that's uh, actually a tricky thing to find out beforehand sometimes so if you're buying like I'm, I'm not saying that this is the case but if you're like buying an HP server then it could be that certain features are only available if you use HP memory and if you put another brand of memory in the unit then Suddenly it won't run at the full speed, or some specific feature will not be enabled. Um, then moving on to um, amount of um, potential storage you'd be interested in. And this, of course, comes from the physical fact that how many storage base, I mean, how many physical storage units can you plug in? Uh, what kind of a controller type does it have? What RAID options does it support? And does it have a cache? And this is important if it says that it has a cache on the server. And is that battery powered, like battery backup or capacitor driven? And then how old is the server? Because, uh, you know, these, these batteries, they can be very, uh, they can be custom built for the specific server. And as the, you only can use that battery type or capacitor type. So it's not like you can go buy it off, off your local you can't go to your local supermarket and rebuy the batteries. So it's a thing to keep in mind. Then the physical size of the storage units, you know, do you want to use three and a half inch um, hard drives, two and a half inch? Um, you know, do you want to use, um, you know, uh, solid state storage or do you want to use uh, spinning drives? And then the interfaces is a big mess especially in enterprise computing. I mean, the, the, the most common is it's um, SCSI over serial with SAS drives, or you can actually use SATA drives also. And then um, what you don't really consider when you're working on a, on a workstation or you know PCs and stuff is that the, every hard drive unit needs to be put onto a caddy. And then the caddy is the one that you plug into the storage unit. And, um, uh, you you have to check that those caddies are available, like generally. Because usually they're not included with the server when you buy it, so you have to source them separate. Uh, so that's caddy type and availability. Um, 
Now this I've come across a few a few instances of some when they've made um, specifications for selling a, an old server that um, <laughs> actually doesn't. The, it seemingly doesn't contain the backplane for the storage unit or the storage the the um, cables needed to connect the storage units to the actual um, control. So they're like re like they've gone into the server and they've taken all that out. And then they expect you, then you buy the server, then you find out, oh, I haven't got the cables. Then you contact them and they, oh, yeah, we can sell you the cables for another extra amount of money. <laughs> so one has to be very, very, very um, aware, of, or try to be aware. And then um, uh, what kind of a physical installation configuration are you looking for? Is it like a type one, a 1U server or a 2U server configuration? Uh, do you want redundant power supplies? Um, I kind of like redundant. I mean, since it's old equipment, I, I do kind of like the idea that it would come with two power supplies. But then sometimes you have to balance, like, okay, if you get it nice and cheap, then maybe you could say, okay, you know, I'll take it with one. Because the power supplies, usually when they're sold separately, as a, you can buy a couple of them for hardly anything. Uh, at least what I've looked online. Uh, Networking sometimes can be a bit confusing to understand what type of networking interface is included with the server when you're purchasing it if the specification is a bit vague. So um, you would probably want to have just standard one gigabit ethernet. Um, but sometimes it might come with um, more advanced like 10 gigabit ethernet slots or even fiber built in. So have to be a bit careful. And they usually, in the specifications, they somehow they don't include the, I'm going to call it mother motherboard integrated Ethernet, but that's not really true because many servers even have for that a separate card. But um, they don't mention it, the, the, those, they don't mention those cards or the, or the motherboard based uh, network. They don't, they don't consider those as networking somehow. I suppose it's a data center mentality that you, you don't use that crap for connecting it to the server. You, you use dedicated networking cards. Um, yeah, and then display-wise, it's VGA is is still the absolute standard when it comes to um, um, data center servers. So don't expect anything else than a than a motherboard-based VGA connector. Hmm. And then you can, of course, you can connect in a keyboard and mouse also. Uh, some, there's a bit of oddities if you're going to use the um, firmware-based services, then sometimes they actually want to have a PS2 mouse and a PS2 keyboard. And then sometimes they'll work with USB keyboards and USB mouse. So uh, uh, it depends on the generation of the server. And an interesting point is the uh, also is the when it comes to the hardware is that do you want to put in your own cards, like, uh, like right now or later, because um, PCI slots are usually supported by Razer cards in the server. So you have the motherboard. And there's there's no PCI slots in the motherboard by definition, and then you put in a Razer Razer card, and then on that card you have one or two slots. So anyway, um, environmental considerations. I mean, by definition and normally speaking, um, noise level is not something that ever came across anybody's of the designer's mind when they um, were designing the data center. Server. So with the fans at full tilt and a high thermal load, it will make a lot of noise, uh, and it will actually produce quite a lot of heat. And um, you actually have to take into account this noise, you know, how you're going to deal with it. And, and, and actually understand that before you get the server, that it's going to be very, very noisy. And um, you're also going to have to consider that it's going to get very hot if you run it at full speed. And it's going to have high electricity consumption. I'm not talking about that you will have a problem of running, it out, running the server from a normal outlet. That's not the case, but it, it, it will consume a lot of power if you actually do run it at full um, CPU memory um, storage utilization. 
and space requirements, these are quite big units. They're both heavy and physically compared to a PC or some or a laptop or whatever. <laughs> they're, they're, they're relatively large. Um, and then when you come a little bit more back to this physical installation, are you going to put it in a rack? Usually it's 19 inch rack of various configurations. Um, and if you are going to put it in a rack, uh, take this into consideration that they always remove the rails and accessories from these servers. Uh, I've, I haven't seen any, any uh, well, in, in most of the servers I've seen, you don't, you don't get the um, racking accessories or rails with it, so you actually have to consider you need to buy those separately. And they need to be the, the rails and the accessories that are ap applicable to the specific server you're buying. So not all rails and accessories are interchangeable. And not, uh, not all rails and accessories will fit in all racks. So there's, there's also this problem that the, you know, a 19 inch rack is not a 19 inch rack. <laughs> they're, they're like different. <laughs> so you would have to spend a little bit of time thinking about that. Um, so um, what do I recommend you do now? Uh, well, even before you go into the buying phase, serious buying phase, I think you should just spend a lot of uh, time online and searching uh, and doing your homework and um, spend time finding out um, what is common and then try and monitor for sellers that seem to have been in, the, in, the, in this activity for a long time and have good ratings. So if you, if you spend like a month online just continuously browsing through, you will soon, very soon understand that, oh, that's the, you know, this, this seller seems to be dumping like 50 of these. I mean, it seems to be continuously dumping these servers. You know, the, the and, um, you know, these types of servers or these brands of servers are now something that are, they're, they're very common. Um, and then um, we get a little bit into the sort of like, um, actual buying phase and in the buying phase you you know there are um, you know I, I would recommend that you um, set your own boundaries and be prepared to walk away uh, and that's what I did I said I mean I went through all my homework and then I said oh, this is the the cost level I want to hit and this is the configuration level I want to hit I mean, of course, taking into account what's available, so you can't set an unrealistic expectation for what you can get for money. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the first monitor the selling site that you actually selected to use. And then you get into more of this, into more detail. So, so you know, you've done some pre-research, and then. Uh, now you're actually going to be looking at configurations to actually look at every server. And, um, you know, always check that the server is somewhat well specified. And, and if it's not, if it's very vague and the pictures are like from a catalog or they're copy paste, the same picture is copy pasted and, and the seller is just a one off case that you've never seen before, then I just say move on. Not worth it. Um, you also need to, I'm sad, you need to, you need to actually expect that you are taking a risk of a certain kind when you're doing this, so it's, um, you know, your investment might turn out to be for nothing. <laughs> you know, the, the hardware might fail the next, you know, might, might not start when you get it or it fails totally or, you know, you might have an OS driver that you can't find or or a paywall that you have to climb over before you can use the equipment. So, so just you know, keep that in mind so you don't get super aggra you know, aggravated about the situation. Uh, return policies that are stated are, I don't know, probably wishful thinking, or they're just plain impractical. Like they will, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't think you could return this stuff. <laughs> Um, I'm 
thinking of making a separate video about um, uh, storage unit and, and accessory purchasing, but we'll see. And then uh, another one on, on the um, operating system. Um, more on going into details on the operating system side. Um, I've actually found it useful to, um, if you're looking for additional info, even to prepare. And this is actually a good check to make, that if you identify a server, oh, that's kind of nice server, it's pretty much what I want. Um, can you still find the manufacturer? I mean, is it a main brand so that the manufacturer still exists? And do they still have the user manuals online? And then you can also search like general internet or forums. You know, to see if there are other people that have this server, and um, and are there others owning a similar server, like on YouTube? There's many, many channels, that, you know, now including mine, that are going on about used data center server. So, uh, they're, they're, but they're a good source of information. You, know, you can listen to them how what their experiences have been, both good and bad, how how they've handled configurations and stuff. Anyway, hope I haven't um, discouraged you from buying a, a server. I'm, I'm actually having fun with them, so um, <laughs> even if it's sometimes frustrating. Um, I hope you found this informative. Please just consider subscribing, hit the like button if you like the video. Uh, you can buy merch, um, or you can buy me a cup of coffee. The links are in the description. And... Um, I'll see you in the next one then.